Hello, and welcome back to another chatty draw with me. Today, I'm finishing up my June patron rewards, and this month's theme is actually birthday inspired. My birthday is later this month, so I just thought it would be fun to do something with a cute birthday vibe. And man, time has really flown. I feel like it was just yesterday that I was in LA celebrating my 25th, and now we're already on to the next year. Time flies when you get older, guys. And I know some of you guys are gonna roll your eyes. I'm not that old, but yeah. Speaking of time flying, I realized it kind of has actually been a little bit over a decade since I started posting my art online. I was under a whole different moniker when I was 13 or 14 years old. And it's somewhat crazy to think about how even the landscape of social media has changed so much since then. I went from drawing cute, heavily anime inspired art to making kind of silly TikToks. And nowadays, differently from when I was a kid, I'm crossing my fingers that Instagram picks up my posts and shows them to my audience. On the topic of Instagram, I'm sure many of you are aware of the concerning news about the platform incorporating generative AI, which has triggered a mass exodus of artists from the platform. Understandably so. Instagram has been declining as a viable platform for a while for artists over the years, with artists consistently facing challenges like constant reposting and art theft, low engagement rates, not even being able to see your own followers or who you're following. And now we're also dealing with the reality of Instagram forcefully using user content to train their AI models without our consent. Obviously, this latest development involving AI has very understandably so caused significant backlash from the artistic community. Artists have long relied on Instagram as a platform to showcase their work and connect with their audiences and clients, but the platform's actions have definitely eroded trust over the years and raised concerns about the exploitation of creatives on the app. And we've seen this time and time again, as one app falls, another rises. And I'm sure many of you have already heard of Kara or Kara. I'm not sure how it's pronounced just yet. But if you haven't heard, it's yet another social media app for artists. It's kind of got the look and feel of competitors like Threads and Blue Sky, which both already imitate Twitter, now known as X. However, one significant aspect that sets apart Kara is its ability to glaze your art and protect it from generative AI, which I think is honestly really awesome, especially during a time where tech bros want your labor for little to no cost to them and when every part of the internet lately is trying to use AI in some way. Speaking of which, I think their mission statement is actually pretty promising and thorough. They very clearly outline their stance and approach to AI, which has enticed many artists online. So many folks are migrating from Instagram to Kara in light of Instagram's new policies. Under Kara's about section, they clearly state the following on their stance on AI. We do not agree with generative AI tools in their current unethical form, and we won't host AI-generated portfolios unless the rampant ethical and data privacy issues around datasets are resolved via regulation. In the event that legislation is passed to clearly protect artists, we believe that AI-generated content should always be clearly labeled because the public should always be able to search for human-made art and media easily. I also thought that this tidbit on their site was interesting to mention. They state, many platforms currently accept AI art when it's not ethical, while others have promised no AI forever policies without consideration for the scenario where adoption of such technologies may happen at the workplace in the coming years. I think this is really, really interesting because for as much as we hate generative AI, I do think AI is unfortunately the future of creativity. I think AI can actually be a helpful tool. I think it could be a great means of speeding up your workflow and making really tedious tasks easier. For example, I feel like I have struggled to edit videos for years and it's why making YouTube videos have been so difficult for me up until recently. And while I still just kind of buckled down and learned how to edit, there are definitely tools that exist today that help you edit your videos a little bit faster now, like auto-generating captions or analyzing footage and detecting pauses. That's all more advanced technology than what existed just a few short years ago. 
These specific uses of AI are way less concerning and unethical compared to generative AI. Specifically, generative AI has become a massive threat to creativity over the last year, and it doesn't show signs of slowing down. In fact, it's only growing and has already started to replace real artists in creative roles. Which makes Kara all the more special. I think it's exciting to have a space like Kara that has made a conscious decision not to support AI-generated art. And I think the idea of a social media app focused primarily on sharing art and fostering an online art community is really refreshing. And maybe this is a little bit of an unpopular opinion, but I do actually like the idea of having an app that's centered around just artists. It would be wonderful to have an app that rivals the vibrant community that once existed on platforms like DeviantArt, where random llama icons were shared and artists thanked each other for likes on their profiles. And not to say that Kara is quite like DeviantArt, in fact, it seems more like an alternative to ArtStation for its portfolio and job board features, but it is an artist-made platform for artists versus the social media platforms that are made for a general public that we so often use. My initial impression of Kara is that it's fairly user-friendly compared to the many artist-focused apps I've used over the years. I particularly like the QR code feature, which I felt like could be useful for in-person events. Recently, I participated in a craft market and I had a few attendees want to find me online after our conversations. And having a QR code to share that directly takes you to a social platform would have been handy. I did have a QR code displayed at my booth but it directed you to my card page. And I think some folks might have found that more confusing because there were different links to everywhere I exist online rather than a page that they could quickly glance at and be on their way. But it remains to be seen whether this is another app we will all just hop to and forget about because of course, old habits die hard. Many social media apps fail due to the lack of a strong user community and the challenge of reaching a wide audience compared to established platforms like Instagram and Twitter where people are already congregated. For artists, more often than not, we operate as solopreneurs and rely on social media for finding work opportunities and customers. It's super crucial to be visible beyond just the general art community at times. Say for instance, if you're a shop selling floral watercolor paintings, you'd want to be present in front of audiences interested in maybe cottage core aesthetics rather than being strictly limited to art focused circles. And not to say that artists don't buy from other artists, but sometimes it's good to consider a wider customer base. And of course, this is me speaking as someone who runs a business and has to consider content marketing these days. While it may be more artist to artist on platforms like Kara, that could still be a good thing. Many artists who prefer to solely showcase their artwork could potentially flock here. It's a platform that spotlights their creations without the pressure of producing video content, which has clearly taken over most, if not all, social platforms these days. From Facebook to Instagram to even here on YouTube, social platforms are trying to get a little piece of the pie that TikTok has in keeping users engaged with videos. But this trend has come as a huge downside for artists who don't necessarily want to set up cameras. So the potential to cultivate an art community based around art itself rather than how trendy or viral a video can be is a great prospect with Kara. For artists reluctant to transition to filming themselves, it definitely allows a respite, which allows them to connect with the community of fellow artists without the need for on-camera appearances. The art can again take center stage rather than a vlog or a process video where you might be more focused on the editing or the virality of the video than the piece itself. Also, just want to quickly mention that this is a huge reason that Instagram has been on the decline for years. The desire to compete with TikTok has taken away what was special about Instagram, which was its emphasis on photos. And now that feed posts are algorithmically suppressed on Instagram versus incentivized on Kara, 
I can't really see a reason why artists wouldn't want to share their work on Kara instead. All of that said, I know I'm painting Kara's potential with a really broad and optimistic brush. Currently, because of the influx of half a million users migrating to the platform, they've been bogged down by server issues and bugs, issues of which I hope they're able to solve soon. I did read somewhere that their bill skyrocketed because of how heavy the traffic is now from the Instagram migration. I think the huge challenge Kara will face, like many other artist platforms, is sustaining an active creative community. As artists have hopped from platform to platform for nearly two years without finding a lasting home. There's definitely a sense of app fatigue these days. I think it's really exhausting to constantly learn new platforms and try to funnel your audiences from one to the other. It is a task, which often leads to complacency with existing apps and pre-grown audiences. And I wouldn't blame anyone for wanting to stay comfortable on Instagram. But I do wonder, as more of these social media companies continue to adopt AI, if this will be the kicker for artists to rally around a new app. That is all for this video. But as I mentioned in the beginning, this is my patron reward for this month. And if you'd like to snag a print or sticker version of this for yourself, consider joining my Patreon. It's a great way to support me as an artist. If you enjoy my content and want to get a little treat for yourself, I offer a variety of tiers like a sticker club, print club, a podcast tier, and a tip jar if you'd simply like to show your support. Besides that, let me know what your thoughts are regarding Kara down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you plan to join the platform, I know I have already. I'm Nia Dragon on there and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.